that's a good song, man. Oh my gosh. I swear YouTube, if you demonetize me for listening, for having fun for five seconds to that song, I swear to God. Uh, in today's episode, we are gonna learn how to make this cool, like, warts type website, where we're gonna use 3JS Fiber together with Next.js to get this nice, like, animation, infinite scroll animation, basically. You can go back and forth, and the images change their size based on the velocity of how fast you scroll, and they also go grayscale when you stop. So it's a really cool effect, you can do so much with it. It's gonna take about 10 minutes or so, it's actually much more simple than you think. Okay, let's get started. So we are in a Next.js 14 project here, and we're gonna be using 3.js. If you haven't heard of 3.js, it's this amazing library that enables you to do 3D animations with WebGL. So 3.js, here we go. Now this was used mainly for like vanilla JS projects and stuff like that. Uh, but now we have Tree Fiber, which gives you components, uh, like a component-based system specifically for working in React, which is fantastic. Uh, but there's also another package called, called Gray, which I haven't known about for a long time. This is like pre-made helper functions in Fiber already made for you. So this is gonna help us quite a bit. Okay, so these are the three packages you're gonna need to install. It's gonna be React Tree, Gray, React Tree Fiber and Tree JS. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna need to import a couple of things up here at the top. We're gonna get the perspective camera in, preload, scroll, and scroll controls. This is coming from Dre. And then from Tree Fiber, we're gonna get the canvas and use tree. This is a hook that allows us to uh, basically on every frame run some sort of callback code. Okay. And of course we have suspense by React. So what we're gonna do here is just do an export default function. If you work with 3.js before, you know when you do this canvas, it's it's quite a bit of code to actually just like get a canvas set up and you know get some code up and running. 3.js basic example. Let me just show you quickly. So if you just do vanilla 3.js, here we go. You'd have to create a scene. You have to create a perspective camera, add a width and a height to it. You have to create this uh, WebGL renderer because you need a renderer, and then set that renderer to render out in your canvas, right? And then if you want to animate, again, you have to create these functions where you do a request animation frame, you have to clear out that request. Okay, so it gets a bit like, even like creating a box, right? A box, a cube is going to take quite a bit of time. Whereas here, you just do canvas. <laughs> that's a, So yeah, that's quite nice if you ask me. Okay, let's return something here. So again, we're going to have that canvas, which we're, this is the place we're going to render everything out. And here, this is going to take a couple of props here, like GL. So here you can do stuff like adding anti-aliasing, which is those like jaggy lines, you know, when you play games, anti-aliasing. Older games used to have this even more uh, when you'd like look at wires and stuff like that. You'd have these jaggy lines without anti-aliasing. See, in the distance especially, that would look quite funny. Whereas anti-aliasing adds like that blur around it, add those kind of faded pixels around it to make it look smoother. That's one. And then let's also do DPR. And this is a target pixel ratio. So if you want to control it, you know, like what's the highest limit it can go to and what's the lowest, like one, 1 1.5, maybe that's the max. I don't want to go like really crazy high here. This is not good. Something's erroring out here. I think it needs to be in an array. 1, 1 1.5. Yep, that's it. Perfect. We got our canvas set up. Here we can also have a suspense set up with a fallback if we want to, like that. We can also add preload here, just at the bottom of the suspense. This is going to make sure if you have any 3D models and stuff like that, it's going to preload them ahead of time. Uh, we have scroll controls. Um, this is not working. Oh, it takes a couple of parameters in. So what we can do here is infinite because we want to just like go, 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 right? You can scroll backwards as well and the image is just coming. It's going to look really cool. We can specify a direction as well. So we can say horizontal. The amount of pages as well. So this is going to dictate like how far you can scroll, kind of like in, you know, GSAP with scroll trigger. Let's put three for now. And distance. Um, not 100% sure from what I've seen when I've increased this number, it just looks like it, it drags out that page. So imagine you have like a page with a width of, sorry, a height of 100 VH. So if you add distance to here, it would pretty much make it like 200 VH. 
And that's what I've seen. I'll just leave it at one, which is going to be like the standard height, right? Or like scroll area, I should say. Okay, and I think that's it. So here now we have the scroll inside. And inside the scroll, we don't need the camera. This is where we need to add our images, text, and whatever else we have. So we're going to make a slides component like that. So for now, I'll just add a H1 here and say slides because we need to add another component within here. If your sc scroll controls here is still erroring out, that's what, if we hover over, it says, oh, it's missing children. Okay, so <laughs> as you can see, we did the self-closing tag here. That's not good. So let's, let's fix this. Let's close that like there and then we'll wrap it all the way around this scroll. Okay, so down here. We'll close it up like that. And that should be okay now. Slides here is gonna error out. Let's import it. Okay, no errors, that's great. Okay, so we're in the slides here. Now, in the tutorial, you saw that I had like loads of different pages and loads of different slides. So we'll make a new component that already holds three slides, and then we'll render out like 15 of them up here. So let's just make a function called uh, slide like that, as in singular. And this is going to take in URLs here. I'll just leave the default with like an empty pair of string for now. It's also going to take in whatever props is going to come from that Dre image, which you're going to see in just a second. Okay, so we'll leave it like there. And now here, we'll just get a ref uh, to that image that we're going to provide down here. Okay, and we'll pass in null for the ref and here where we render stuff out, we are going to return a group. We're going to say group like that. And in here, we are going to render out an image tag, but not any image tag. It's an image tag provided by Dre. Okay, so let's import that at the top. So to keep it simple, I'll just make all three components here. There's not really any reason to keep them separate. So let's just say export default function Dre image. Again, this is different from your you know, regular Next.js image because it's going to take in some 3D props in it. Uh, we don't need default here, so let's just do function. Yeah, just function Dre image like that. Okay, it's going to take in the props and the props for this is is going to come from here. React tree Dre. Okay, if you want to get the props for them, as you can see, it has scale, color, zoom and a couple of other um, effects in there. Okay. Now that we have this open, we're going to need to add a ref to that as well and also to a group that we're going to make here. So we're going to make another ref. Okay. And here we're going to return a, and then here from the straight image, all I really want to do is return the ref with a group here and also that Dre image. So let's import it image like that. And if you don't want this to have any prob problem with your like Next.js images, we can just rename it here, the image like that. Okay. Let's paste it in here. And again, so this whole component, all it does, that's all I want you to know. This whole component just adds a ref to this group and adds a ref to this image because we can control the group independently from the image if we want to. Okay, so here we'll pass in the ref, which is ref, and we'll also pass down, yeah, whatever props are left from that image. So the reason I wanted to do this is because one slide is going to hold three images. All right. And then we can render out multiple slides that each have three images within them. All right. So we'll go back here and what we're going to do is render out that Dre image. So let's import it here like that. We're going to do three of them. Okay. Now here, what we can do is pass down the props from that Dre image down here. So the group has it now. And now we can control that whole group with all the three images, which is really cool. Okay. Whew, that was quite a bit, wasn't it? Well, fear no more. There's someone here to make this much easier for you because all you really need in 3D is math. So today's sponsor is Brilliant. Brilliant offers thousands of bite-sized lessons that are super fun and interactive. 
on computer science, linear algebra, if you want to get into machine learning and more. You know, you're going to find this quite often, especially in web development, that you're going to need some math skills. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I really tried to learn math and spend 12, 14 hours on these long courses. But at that point, I feel like you're just trying to remember the courses and remember the lessons. Whereas with Brilliant, I just love the fact that it's interactive. I go on the app, I pick a subject that I'm interested in learning, and then it's just like playing a video game. And that's why I love Brilliant. I can just head in and pick a subject that I'm interested in, and Brilliant is also going to figure out kind of where my level is when it comes to that subject. So if you want to expand your knowledge, join Brilliant using the link in the description down below for a 30-day free trial plus 20% off your premium subscription. So check out the link. Thank you, Brilliant. Let's get back to the video. Now, let me show you something really cool that you can do. Let's head over here to the slide component. And what I'm going to say is say const equals to use tree like that. And check this out. In here, we have access to the state uh, whatever. We have access to the viewport if we want. We have access to the camera. And here, what we can extract is, let's do the width. Let's just head back here to the home page and render out that hero because we're not seeing any console logs. Okay, let's do a refresh. As you can see, it's not gonna work because you're gonna get a runtime error because you're trying to render out a H1 inside the slides here. So for now, let's just head over here and add a Dre image. And let's just add a position to it. For now, we're just gonna say zero, zero, zero we're gonna change this in a second we're gonna add a scale to it as well here we're gonna say let's say five and seven i'll show you what this does in a bit and then we can also pass down a url and here i'm just gonna say this is gonna be urls zero like that and i'll copy this two more times because we're gonna have urls one urls two okay we're going to be able to pass these down. And now in the slides here, rather than rendering that out, because that's not going to work, we can add some fragments in here, just so we don't make a div or anything. And then we can just pop in our slides. So let's do slide. So let's add two more slides in here, and I'll just change the position here to one like that. Okay, cool. So let's also get some images. I went to pexels to get these. You can just go here like this if you want this to be really quick. Copy image URL. That's what I did. Uh, and then we'll post them here in the URLs. Okay, so this is going to be an array type. And there we go. Now when we hit save, you're going to see that we're actually getting this rendered out. And as you can see, we can scroll. These are the three pages we can scroll. And then it resets like that. All right, cool. So we got something working. And as you can see, they're all on top of each other. As you can get the width from the viewport here, if you use the use tree. And then for this first image here, I'm just going to multiply it by the width. So I'll say width times one. And there we go. So now they're separated onto their own pages. And again, if you want to have a third page here, as you can see, it just jumps like that. So when you have three pages like this and you want to create a perfect loop, Copy the sucker over here. You just need one. You just need one element to be duplicated. And of course, this is going to be on the last page, right? So you do width times two, since we only have three pages. And now look, when you go, look at that. You got a perfect loop. And here, boop, the image changed there, but you're not going to see it. So look at that. You got this nice, cool, infinite loop. And again, you can give more space here because you're going to see that little jump see so you can fix that as well just by moving these around okay but since now these are set up nicely the actual slides the individual images can also be modified and placed however you want so again we can do that same kind of um you know you can get the width again from here if you want so as you can see by default if you leave the position zero 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 here it's going to drop it right in the center for us uh, if we change the scaling here so you can see two is going to go vertical higher right so five so you can get that type of effect. I also added this W here, which is gonna check like the distance uh, of the width of the viewport. In case, you know, the viewports is quite much smaller, I wanna have a lower value there, okay? So I'll do minus width times W zero zero like that, which is gonna put it quite close to the beginning of the page there. All right, so that's one. And then for the rest of the two, I'll copy this over and I'll show you what sizings I picked. 
So I did 5, 7, 7, 5, and 5, 5. I can mess around with this, have, have fun. But let's have a look. So now when we scroll, as you can see, we get that cool infinite scroll effect. That's not even hard to set up. Uh, what we can do is add some text on top of this as well. And then I'll show you how you can animate these images based on velocity as well. Now, here's the cool part. Once you have the setup, adding more to this is so, so easy. So let's say we have some sort of uh, text slides as well, right? So DSX. I'll just copy paste this in. All it really is, is just a couple of H1s with a position of absolute on top of these. Now, remember, we have three pages, so we always want to make sure that we loop over it perfectly. So here what I did was I put the left to 25 VW and the last slide I want to make sure that the value matches 100 VW exactly. Okay, so first one 25 and then you do 125 and the last one will be 225. Meaning that when you import this, have a look, we can just go to the hero now and add a new scroll. We'll go scroll and here we'll do the slides. Not slides, sorry, the text slides. I hit save. As you can see, you're going to get an error because you're trying to render out H1s again in your canvas. That's okay. HTML, boom. You just add the prop there. Thank you, 3JS. Look at that. How cool is that? Uh, I just added a bit of styling here. Just changed the font size of this H1. But now you get this really cool infinite scrolling effect. Hey. All right. Last bit. One last thing I want to do is add some animation to this Dre image here. So let's head here to the top. I'll import this used scroll from Tree Dre and this used frame as well. This used frame again just allows you to run um, a callback function on every frame of the canvas. And then we have math utils here as well. So let's import it. Math utils from Tree.js. Okay. Uh, the type again here is fine for the group. As you can see, it's a type of group that we added. I haven't found the type for this one yet. If anyone could let me know, I'll just add like a DS ignore for that. <laughs> if you can find the type for, for this uh, Dre image, you know, I tried with the image props, but that didn't work. So yeah, let me know. Uh, but here's what we're doing. We're checking if the group is there. We're checking if the image exists. And if it does, we're getting the position act Z here, sorry, and we're adding a damp on it. So we're dampening it means that it's going to interpolate nicely uh, between those two values for you. In this case, we're limiting it and we're adding a min, a math the max and say, hey, the max can be four and the minimum can be the delta, which is going to be like this. I believe it's like the velocity of the scroll here. Okay, and look, as we as we add that, when we scroll, as you can see, the images size up and when we stop, we also add that grayscale here at the bottom. Okay, so that's super, super easy. You can do this with anything you want. If I want to change maybe the size of the Z, uh, see, I set a max here of uh, 100. If I do like 400 here, because I'm just multiplying it by the delta, look, the faster you scroll, the bigger it gets as well. So you can get this really cool effect. That might be a bit <laughs> that might be a bit too extra. I'll save it at 100 and we'll leave it like that. I'll push this code up to GitHub. You can check it out. You can mess around with it. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a great day. I loved having you here. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.